Okay, welcome to the Tuesday, July the 6th meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. Welcome everyone who showed up for face to face in the first time in over a year. It's nice to see everybody in person again. I will let members introduce themselves. Some people are on Zoom, so we'll take it for everybody here. Go ahead. Okay. Martha Smirsky, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Steve Everett, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Okay, Liz is with us by Zoom, so we will go ahead and start the meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. I'll second that. All in favor of approving the agenda, speak your names since one of us is on Zoom. <laughs> Martha? Yes. And Steve. So unless anybody has any other questions to start, we can go to the first application for 7 School Street. Oh, hold on. Can we actually do it? Because we do have some people via Zoom, okay. including people who oh, haven't sorry. done it. You have to I've got uh, a, review yeah. the meeting procedures. And I've got a I'm few. Sorry. It's modified. It's shorter. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't have to unmute myself to do it. Um, all right, so I am going to share screen. This is for people watching via Orca and people attending via Zoom. Give me just a minute because this is a little slow. All righty. Um, so for those viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the Design Review Committee meeting via the Zoom platform. You can do that using this link, um, or you can phone in using this phone number and the meeting ID. If you're trying to do so and you're having any problems, please email me. I have my email up while running the meeting. Um, I'll leave this up for a little bit. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, for everyone attending, um, if you have the ability to mute your microphone, please do so when you're not speaking. This reduces background noise. Um, and the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment about an actual item on the agenda, please raise your hand, um, or you can use the raise hand button on your toolbar and then wait for the chair to recognize you before you speak. Um, for anyone, uh, members of the public, um, or if you're, we have two applicants tonight, but if you wanna speak on each other's application for any reason, um, make sure that you wait for the chair to recognize you to, to participate and then make sure you provide your full name and address for the record and for applicants as well. If for some reason your name isn't on the application, please make sure you give us your full name. Um, you know, we don't have any members of the public here right now. So just a note that because we have provided Zoom access as an option for accessing this meeting, if that starts to fail and members get noticed that members of the public can't get in, we would actually have to continue the meeting to another date, to a time and place certain. All right, I'm gonna hand this back over to the chair. Okay, we can move forward to the first application for 7 School Street. Are they here remotely or? Yeah, yes. I'm here remotely. Okay, go ahead and describe your application for us for the three new signs. Sure, so um, we are moving uh, from our current location on State Street over to School Street. Um, forgive me, a little nervous. I haven't been through this process before. Um, we worked with um, a great big graphics uh, to help us um, look at what we might want for signage on that building. Um, so on the first page, we're looking at um, signage that's going to be on the side of the building that's facing um, School Street. I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, Main Street. Um, our goal is to put as few holes into this building as we can. Um, this is Pat Malone's building and I've been working uh, with Pat and his folks and they're going to install the signs and probably uh, work on installing them into the mortar of the building to avoid putting holes into the, into the historic uh, brick. So that's going to be a painted metal sign with Vermont Community Loan Fund in white. Um, 
The second sign is a projecting sign, so it'll be visible from both Elm Street and Main Street uh, for folks coming into the office. Um, we've used, just used our acronym for that as well as um, the number of years that we've been in business currently. Um, and then the third sign, um, if you have the handout, there's some windows to the right of that door and that's gonna be a training room. Uh, for us to provide some training to some of our customers, our borrowers. So we just wanted to put a little discreet sign above that door just to give folks, um, just so they know where to enter the building to go in for the, for the training. So I'm not sure if there's anything else, any other questions you might have. Catherine, this is the old Necky building, isn't it? It is, yep. Okay. It is, and we've done quite a bit of work on the inside of that building. It's going to be really beautiful on the inside. We're expected to move about the third week in July into that new space. Do any of the committee members have any questions, comments, or suggestions at this time? It looks good to me. I don't at the present, I, you know, looking at them online, they, I thought they looked good. Um, I don't know if we want to look at any mock-ups. Well, you have the, you have them there. Yeah. Uh, and I can look on my cell phone and look at some of the mock-ups. Well, I can share my screen if that would be helpful to show. That would be great, Catherine. Go ahead. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. I thought that the handout was um, with everything else. I apologize. It, it, oh, it is. It is. It's all in here. So you can share your screen or I can share my screen and sure. however you want to do it. Yeah. So this is the, the two signs that we have on the historic part of the building. And, and this um, rectangular sign is, is facing Main Street. Um, we just thought based on the traffic down School Street, um, People don't tend to walk down that street a whole lot. And if people are looking for this space, they're typically going to typically going to be walking down Main Street. So we thought this would be actually more visible for folks. And then we added the projecting sign off the front of the building. And then um, and then this is the, the third sign that we're looking for. This is just right off the historic part of the building. This is where our training center is. So we were just hoping just to get a nice little discreet sign. Um, there just to let folks know which door to enter when they come in for that training versus the main entrance. Just one, one, just one quick question. Yeah. The, the sign that the large Vermont Community Loan Fund sign that's over the window on the side of the building facing Main Street. Yeah. What is that pipe there? Is that a piece of conduit or? Um, that's a really good question. I'm not sure what that pipe is there, but I can certainly find out. The only reason I was asking if it doesn't cause any issues, if you were to take that sign and move it left, it would hide that pipe, number one. It would line up with the left side of the window, number two. Uh, and again, that's just an option. I was just cool. looking at the way it was placed. And then that that might leave exposed the little sections of brick that extend to the left around the corner of the building. Okay. And it might might preserve that minor minor detail, which is part of the design. Okay. I can certainly okay. talk to Pat about that. I know the pipe is set off a little bit from the building, but I would I, um, can absolutely look at doing that. That's a really great idea. And I was I was just looking at the detail of the brick, the way it extends on both sides of the window and around the corner of the building. Yeah. And moving the sign to the left would preserve that preserve that detail. Okay. But that was all. Uh, it looks very nice. Thank you. I agree with Steve. I think that's a great idea, Steve. Again, it's one of the one of the criteria as we go through that it doesn't hide architectural details. And <laughs> even though it is minor there, I think it would be more attractive. Any I other too. Yeah. Any I other comments? The, oh, just that I think the projecting sign is very attractive. Thank you. 
no, it's very, very nicely done. So just so I'm clear, if I, if I talk to um, uh, Pat's person, Mike, who's going to be installing it, and there is a problem with the pipe, do I come back to committee to talk about that or? There, there shouldn't be an issue with the pipe. Okay. I mean, it's, whatever it is, my, again, my guess is it's probably a piece of conduit. Okay. And, and for whatever reason, they had to put it there. You notice that they lined it up so it moves through that the, to the left of the, on the left side of the window. It's between the solid section of brick and the projections. So okay. it, didn't, it didn't really interfere with that. It was about as minimal as you could make it. And I, and given that it's a, uh, probably a piece of conduit, there shouldn't be any issue with moving the sign right up to the edge of it. Okay, we'll be sure to do that then. Okay. I can go, unless anybody has anything else to add, I can go through the criteria. There's a set of criteria that I'll read through for signs in the design control district. Number one, the size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior designs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties, acceptable. Number two, where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on its structures. All of these signs are in appropriate locations. It is recommended the sign placement be centered over building entries. Again, these locations are acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials of the building. Again, by your app, applying the mounting uh, hardware and the mortar joints, you're, that is acceptable. In masonry buildings, again, it defines that. In masonry buildings, fasteners shall be in the mortar joints. Again, you have applied for that. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings, acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves, that's acceptable. And that's all the criteria that apply. So I ask for a vote from the committee members. All in favor, speak your names. This is Martha, I say yes. Liz, yes. And Steve, yes. So the vote is three in favor. And the Thank next you. step, I'll let you explain. So Catherine, um, the, because this is an administrative permit, um, what we're gonna do is Steve will pass me the recommendation form that he has signed that has the option about the shifting about the you know the, the recommendation about shifting the sign over um because you're remote we'll get that scanned and emailed to you and if you could have you know get that sign that we that you agree to that change and then you can email it back um and then we'll get the permit issued um the the, the earliest it would be issued would be thursday um because audra's out tomorrow but it should be a pretty quick turnaround once we get that email back from you Wonderful, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. I better finish that. Okay. I won't take the time to do that now. We can move on to the next application for 4 Langdon Street. Uh, owner, Interstate Enterprises, applicant, Bent Nails Bistro. Nice name. You can come, come up to up, the grab a, table and. Use these two couple chairs up here. You can leave that chair there. And okay. just, use one of these sorry i didn't realize we we're gonna have two people today uh and yes a reminder just make sure you speak into the microphone and describe your project uh do you want to introduce and ourselves first of all i'm sorry first of all give us your name okay. introduce yourself my name yourselves. is aaron ingham aaron with a aa two A's, yes and curry's churchill Spell your name. First name C H A R I S. Okay. Just for the record, I wanted to make sure we got it right. <laughs> okay. 
Go ahead, describe your application. Uh, we are hoping to put new windows in the front of the building, just the two large windows on the first floor. Um, from the outside, they won't look very much different. They will have some framing, like a French frame, similar to what's already on the upper windows, just larger scale. Um, the only real difference is they will fully open, similar to a garage-style door. So we want to be able to allow as much light and, and fresh air in when possible to do that. So that's, that's really the basic gist of what we're trying to accomplish. And they also fit in the existing space that's already there, so we won't be... Right, there won't be any enlargement of the frame of the hole that's already there. It'll just be replacement of what's already there. Now, what's there now is two large panes, yeah. one one large pane in each opening. The frame of the window is a light color to match the other trims. It will be the color. I also have to paint the building within a year. Okay. So, whatever color is chosen for the trim paint, it will be that color. Okay, the... Regardless of what it comes in as originally here. Do you have a color for the building? If you, or are you gonna plan to come back for an application, oh. or do you? They don't, it's already painted. They don't have to, they don't have to come to design review to just paint a painted surface anymore. Oh, okay, so it'd be the same color, basically, or? No, there are to... historical colors that we have to choose from. Oh, okay. Um, Is that administrative, but you don't have to do that we anymore? Don't... Design, when design review regulations changed, if a surface okay. was previously painted and all they're doing is repainting it, yeah. okay. no permit at all. I do have one suggestion, not necessarily has to be approved. Use a, once you scrape and prep the building, use a urethane primer. Your paint job will last about five times as long. I am actually a professional house painter by trade. Oh. So. <laughs> I'm with you. I don't have Absolutely what you say. <laughs> but I also, Steve, we had a conversation about somebody gave me some great advice over the phone. Oh, okay. A few weeks back was a while ago. Okay. So I took notes. Now, I've had experience with old buildings and the, the issues that. <laughs> well, this is the reason why I'm actually agreeing to do it for. It, it's called sweat equity that we have built into the lease. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a smart move to pull in a painter into the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Into the group. Yes, yeah, she knew what she was doing. <laughs> One other, one other comment, and not a suggestion, just a thought. If those two garage windows, if those frames, if you if you look at the glass in the window now, I mean, what you see is whatever display is behind them. In the particular case of the existing windows, you see behind the whatever drapes or name or, or whatever is there. If you were to take out all of that behind it, frequently that opening of the glass will just look black unless you can see what's through it. One, one option for your garage door style windows would be to paint the frames black. I was just thinking that too because it kind of gives it that same feel of just the same paint as before. And I would mention that if you if you look at the front, one example of that is an application that went through for Julio's. Okay. They put they took out glass pane, plate glass single pane windows, and they put in triple sliders, and the slider frames are black. And look well, at the look at the front of Julio's. Yeah, no, we actually like that idea much better. We assumed you all would want the frames to be painted in the same way of the trim, but I like if we can get them in black, which I'm sure we can, we've we appreciate <laughs> and I don't have to paint them, that would be <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> so that's what you're suggesting. You don't have to cut out yes, all the please. little yes, <laughs> <please. Yeah. laughs> I did I just think that, it, that it, you, the functionality of the windows, you know, appreciated. You know, if you've gone to Lunix or places that have done that, Absolutely. but to replicate the appearance of the building as closely as possible, if you do black frames with glass insulated glass in them, perfect. Yeah. And that's that. That is what they offer. They offer, I believe, a black frame or a gray frame. 
And so, and then you don't have to paint it if it comes black. You, <laughs> you're taking hours off of my, uh, my job. That's Your sweat equity is going maybe. down. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say that. Yeah. You'll have to find something else to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, come on over and get a look at the inside, too. I noticed that on the old building, you have your name, the name of the build, of the business is on each of the windows. Do you intend to do that with the garage windows? But we don't because they'll be open hopefully a lot of the time, which would mean then the building would have no sign. So we were just talking about that. We're going to have to come back like Catherine was just uh, okay. doing it. And once we figure out a sign and where we'd like to place it, we'll you'll see us again. OK. <laughs> yeah. OK. Yeah, because even the front door has to be open when we're in business because mm -hmm. the fire mm -hmm. goes, so we have to uh, choose a, a sign. You do have a space above the trim on the front door. Yeah. Between that and the bottom of the windowsills above it. And in historic districts, recommendations are that lettering only needs to be one inch high for every 10 feet of visibility. So if you could squeeze a 10 foot or a 10 inch letter, eight to 10 inch letter, a 10 inch letter is readable from 100 feet. Wow. So that's more than sufficient. A eight or a 10 inch letter, if you can squeeze it into a sign band, and the visibility is the, is the trick, the, the contrast between the letter and the background. So if you did a yeah. sign panel with lettering on it, black, white, black, gold, black, you know, just contrast, um, and maybe with a thin, thin straight around the perimeter of it, it would look really sharp there. And again, play with colors. It could be, you know, depending on what color you're doing the building, work with something that, again, dark, light contrast. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's nice that we have that option. Is that on the, the trim piece above? The door or it would be, you have a water table above this sign here, or, or I'm sorry, above the entry. You have the trim work, and then above that piece of trim above the door, there's a water table that, that obviously sheds water so it doesn't go behind that trim. And then above that water table, you have a space there, a horizontal space that would give you, you're sort of limited as to where you can put a sign. That's over the door, which would indicate the entry. You have a little space over here, but that, again, I think you're, like, you're lettering. And again, that's your choice to propose one or the other, but the only places that look large enough to put a sign are a horizontal space above the door or to the right here. Everywhere else is cramped. You've, so just so you know, because the sign calculation would be both frontages of this building, you may have enough to be able to do that and then also do like a projecting sign on Elm Street, potentially. An hanger on Elm Street. Already? You can't see it yet. There's a little yeah. thing so, in there forever. So. Right. So you may be able to you may be able to have enough sign. What do you mean by projector? Yeah. Okay. that sticks out from the building, okay, yeah. right? So you may be able to do one there, a small one there, and that one. We just have to work out the calculation. You can email Audra or myself afterwards, and we can let you know what your max sign area allowance is. But again, it doesn't take, with contrast, it doesn't take a large letter to be very readable. Mm -hmm. And especially as you're either walking or driving down the street, if you make, if the letters were too large, you pass by before you can even read it. So, again, an eight inch letter is visible from 80 feet. Between this building and the building across the street, you're probably not 80 feet. Okay. So, eight to 10 inch letter probably would be. the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, 100 feet away will carry you almost back to State Street. <laughs> So this is Liz. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure, have I'm not convinced that this replacement window is really appropriate. Um, Steve, when you were saying the, the window itself, all the components that are not glass would be painted black. So in other words, you think the window, once it's installed, is going to look similar to the, the picture window that's there now? It's as close as you're going to get with any kind of a divider. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. can't, 
I don't think you can get a window that's that wide that will fold up like an overhead door. Yeah. I'm wondering if the panes of glass were bigger, but um, but I think as long as all the trim around the window and the cap above it are similar to the historic trim, and you know, as far as dimensions go and profile, um, painted the same as all the other window trim, then I think you know that's important and should you know would help minimize the change of the window. Liz, do you have a, uh, a copy that uh, with the new style of pictures that we sent? Pictures of what the new ones would look like? We have this one, yeah. and we have this one. The okay, so, so here, hold on, I can share, I can share my screen. So again, this, this trim that's there now. Yeah, we don't want to touch that. What, that would remain as is, yeah. and the door, the door that you're installing would be just inside of that. Correct. So all the, all the existing casings, exterior casings and trim, which match, which match the, the entry door trim, all of that would remain. Yeah, essentially it's just yeah. the glass, just the glass. It's just the glass is being replaced with an interior overhead insulated door. Just so we can open those, because right now there, there is absolutely no way to get any airflow through them. Right. That, I, you know, I have you. Did you consider sliders similar to what they have at um, uh, Julio's? Um, we didn't. The only reason is because then you would only be able to open half of the window. Right. And it would right. still be there. Would still be framing involved with that, also. So th uh -huh. that that would that would still give you two vertical lines if you did a triple slider. And and the other current drawback for those is that a clad triple slider, two, two of them are going to run you about 20, a little over $20,000. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. I, I thought the estimate we got for these were high. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can readjust your scale. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what are the windows made of? The doors, rather? <clears throat> the material? Uh, the the framing yes i believe it's aluminum okay thank you yeah I, it has to be aluminum <coughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I'm yep. thinking about Lunigs in Burlington because they use the same types of garage doors yes in, in their a, area several places in Burlington and that have that kind of mm -hmm. opening mm -hmm. But that one's on their bistro too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Trying to yeah, they're not long, right? They, they only come up, they start, you know, they extend down to about table height, right? But not so far down as these. I'm guessing, I can't remember exactly, but I've seen those done and oh. um, in buildings where, uh, you know, the windows don't go all the way down. Yeah, we have the option. You could put a, a solid panel in, in the bottom, but I just don't think that looks... I'd like to keep as much window, as much glass as we could to match what's yeah. there now. Just be able to open it. That's really all we're trying to do. You can, if there, if there are any code issues, you can put a, a black metal bar across inside at a height that you may be required to for code. Purposes. Yeah, we're fine with the inside being... Because if the windows are open and the sill is very low... Right. There's a chance somebody tumbles out into the, to the street. Well, the one the one side is uh, the music stage, and we're hoping to have acoustic players being able to play in the window because we are being allowed to have outdoor seating in the summertime. So that's one of the reasons why we'd like to be able to do this, so we can turn turn the, turn around. the music around a little bit. Yeah. And when you when yeah. you order the windows, if they are a, a clad or aluminum. Make sure they give you the ones they have a thermal break, so it gives you much better insulating properties. I believe they are. I, I think that's also on the cut sheet. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions, comments from committee members? If it is metal, they have an anodized color. So you can get a black or a dark bronze, either one of which would look 
nice in that location. Black would probably more closely mimic. Well, I like your idea that when it's darker and black, it actually looks like a full pane of glass. Yes. Like what's there originally. So that, I didn't think of that. It's, Any other comments, questions? No. Okay, I can run down through the criteria for this application. Just a little warning, this is gonna be a little longer than the sign. <laughs> <laughs> a little more reading. For all projects for historic structures, the removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced when possible. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement, the new features shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to buildings, but not, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, such as sandblasting, are not be approved, but this installation is acceptable. Again, because it replicates the pane, single pane glass that's there now. Number two, any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with amassing size scale architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable. Rhythm. Visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade shall create a rhythm. Again, you're replicating the existing appearance. That's acceptable. Sorry, that note's a little, <laughs> a little more complicated. Then, we have a little duplication of it. Windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement size, proportions, and original features, such as trim, sash, and moldings, shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features. Again, the overhead doors with the black color, again, is replicating the panes, single panes of glass that are there. And in the recommendations, we'll just say that the recommendation And again, that black color with, a, I'm assuming, a clear glass, probably a low E glass panels. And committee members, all in favor of the application with the black door frame for the overhead doors. Speak your names. This is Martha, I say yes. Liz, yes. And Steve, yes. And administrative approval of this one. And they can sign it right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is administrative permit. So we'll get you to sign off on this on the recommendation form. Do you mind coming um, up? And there should be a pen. There's a, on, place, there's a couple pens I'll there. I'll give you mine. And just sign below my name. Yep. Both of us? Oops. Sure, if you like. You can do it through that it. Way you're whoever. both on the hook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you can give that to me. And uh, just as with the other one, you know, we'll get that out to you as soon as we can, probably you know, Thursday or Friday when Audra's in the office. Okay. Um, and and normally we would mail that out. Um, and there's a, there'll be a notice for you to post on the building as well as a permit to keep. Um, because there is a 15-day appeal period, um, but nobody's shown up to comment. Actually, I so. didn't read the second sheet. <gasps> I'll go through it anyway. Oh. But uh, just wait, wait, wait. Do they do? No, that's a sign and design control. That's the other one. 
That's the other one? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, no. It's it's just, sorry. It was one sheet. You did good. Okay. <laughs> we, there... I got a double sheet. Sorry. Because here's this. These are I, both... got, I got two of those. Oh, because I had extras around. Okay. Sorry. Nope. I was trying to. I need to finish going back that to, one out. Going back to okay. paper again for the first time in over a year. <laughs> what are you just spend all that? Mind a copy of that. Yep, you'll, this, you'll get a copy of this along with the permit, so it's all together, um, as and then also a notice that's on the thicker paper to put on the building for anybody to see, right? Um, yep. And Meredith, um, once that is posted, does that mean we can go ahead and contact the company to, to do uh, the install? Yeah, I mean, nobody's been here to contest it and, and to even comment on it, so the chance of somebody appealing it is pretty darn low. Um, so, you know, anything you do before the, the, the permit will have a, um, like, an active date on it, right? Okay. When it goes into effect. Anything you do before that, it's at your own risk, right? Gotcha. Um, so, you know, it's it's your judgment call on what to do there. I take the while for them to show up. <laughs> um, but we'll get that out to you as soon as we can so that that clock will start ticking as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, be in, be in touch about your signage. Yes. We'll get on that right now. Yeah, the next, next phase. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck with your project. Okay, thank thanks, folks. Sorry, I'm, well, I'm looking down, I'm seeing another sign, sign it's like, wait a minute. No, no. Why, why do I have it here? I'll give you that one. Yeah, that's, that's a blank. Duplicate. Yeah, give me that. Sorry, I had, no, that's okay. we brought some extras and, did, and it got mixed in with yours. I figure out what I was missing. Nope. You weren't missing anything. I just have too much stuff. I think I accidentally passed it back to you. Uh, so, review and approve meeting minutes is what's next. Yes. Does anyone have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding the minutes from May the 17th? Um, I just have a, <clears throat> a comment because I was kind of hesitant about the sign at 147 Main because it was plastic and because that's such a classic mm. old traditional building. But I've been by there a number of times and it looks great. So. Awesome. Is it truly plastic or is it a sign foam or it's a special? sign foam kind of yeah it's yeah. some sort of an acrylic thing yeah and that just didn't I, I had a reaction to that because yeah. of the building because of the fact that the regular sign was all wood and everything but it does look beautiful it's it seems, awesome. seems to be a fairly acceptable replacement for wood in many applications and again if you do, if it's done right, it looks pretty nice. It looks, yeah. So they did it right. They did it right. Good. They okay. still haven't put the caps on the top, though. <laughs> <laughs> they may have already had the sign ordered, but are trying to find somebody to get them the right caps. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With with that, those comments, um, I would move to accept the minutes from May seventeenth, just the way they're written. Okay. Do I hear a second for approving the minutes? I'll second that. All in favor, speak your names. Martha, I say yes. Liz, yes. And Steve, yes. Unless anybody has anything else to add, our next regular meeting is on July the 19th. Correct, and we have applications for it. And I won't be here. I'll oh, be in okay. Sorry. Nope, that's okay. I'll just make sure I talk yeah. to Eric. Yeah, I won't be here either. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> all right. Everybody else better be able to attend or we can't Eric, hold it. So they have to make up for tonight, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well I will make sure to talk to Ben and Eric and get schedules or people will just be bumped. We'll figure it out because um, there won't be an August second meeting. Okay. So we'll we'll figure it out. Thank you both for letting me know as soon as you could. Do I hear, and if there's nothing else, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Um, I move to adjourn. I'll second that, Liz. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Liz. And Steve, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>